It has now been a while since the release of Chapter 4 with Fortnite using UE 5.1 and also my video of the best graphic settings of Chapter 4 which I have to thank you all for the support as that video is now my most video popular video on my channel. Thank you guys. Over the past few days I have been testing and changing some of my settings for a much better looking and performing game and I realized that some of the info I said in the last video was slightly wrong. So I'm making this video to correct those mistakes and to also give a complete graphics tab guide. This again will be done as quick as possible and I'll be telling you all the most important information that you need. If you want a more in-depth video exploring all the new graphics upgrades of UE 5.1, I found an amazing video by Digital Factory which goes in-depth each setting even to the differences between each console. I recommend checking out that video if you're interested in Fortnite's UE 5 graphics upgrade. Like before, I have the same disclaimer. Each PC runs Fortnite differently so each setting will have a different impact on your PC. I will have on screen my PC specs so you have an idea of what I am running. I will provide what I am running and at the end of the video I will give a list of settings that you want to start turning down if you want to hit your desired FPS. To start, for window mode, like any other guides, I recommend full screen. However, for me, I will be using Windows full screen as my PC runs into some scaling issues when I try to use full screen. If you decide to also use Windows full screen like me, I recommend turning on the optimization for Windows games found in your Windows 11 graphics tab. Simply type graphics in your Windows search bar. Click on change graphic default settings and make sure optimization for Windows games is turned on. For resolution, set this to your monitor's native resolution. For me, it is 1440p. For vSync, obviously disable as this will give you slower frame rates and worse input response. For frame rate limit, I recommend you go one option above your monitor's refresh rate, or if you're using a 240 or even 360 FPS monitor, set it to the monitor's refresh rate. In short, doing this will give your, uh, have your game push a higher frame rate than your monitor, and since your monitor will always display the most recent frame, you'll get better input latency as the most recent frame could be the very, very recent frame. For rendering mode, if you want the fancy new UE5 graphics, set it to DirectX 12. Otherwise, if you play comp and want really high refresh rate and the lowest input latency, set it to performance mode. For brightness, user interface, colorblind mode, and strength, this is all personal pre um, preference. This will not impact your game at all. For motion blur, for a high action game such as Fortnite, you do not want this, so turn it off. Now for the juicy part. For anti-aliasing and super resolution, I recommend the same as last video. Play around with TSR low, medium, or high. If you don't want to play with it around, set it to TSR low. But if you want to squeeze every little drop of FPS, play around with it. But generally, TSR low will give you the most FPS, so I'll set it to that. For tempo super resolution, I recommend going balanced or performance. These two are the lowest TSR option that will drag your resolution down to the lowest. But since Epic does a wonderful job with TSR, you won't notice much of a difference between all the TSR settings. So I would recommend those settings, but if you want to build better graphics and want a no way to look, go ahead and turn them up. For 3D resolution, do not touch it as it's already set by your TSR settings. And now for a new setting, 3D dynamic resolution. This was not present in the last video. This will increase the resolution and textures of objects when your GPU is underused. This setting will not impact your FPS as you will only activate when your GPU is underused. However, this might cause some hitching and stuttering problems as it is dynamically changing objects resolution. So if you notice that hitching and stuttering problems, turn this off. Otherwise, turn it on as you'll get better textures with no impact to your FPS. For Night Night, I would again recommend turning this on. No impact to FPS and a free upgrade to your graphics. For virtual shadows, we first need to decide something. Are we willing to use shadows and lumen at the same time? Turning only one of these settings on only provides half of the visual upgrade compared to turning both of them on. And turning only one on will have a huge impact on FPS. So if you're not willing to use both lumen and shadows, turn your shadows to off. Otherwise, you can choose either medium, high or even epic. The difference between each of these settings is the higher you go, the more the smaller details get shadows. For example, take a look at the grass between medium and epic. You can see medium does not have shadows for the grass, while epic does. 
For global illumination, if you chose to not have shadows and nanite at the same time, set it to ambient inclusion. If you do choose to have shadows and lumen at the same time, choose lumen high. The difference between lumen high and epic is that epic will produce more ray tracing rays for a more accurate picture. You might notice on high that you may see some light shimmer or um, some light leaking through. That's just a result of not enough rays being created to create a more accurate lighting picture. For reflections, in the last video, I didn't notice much of a difference. However, now since I know where to look, I would recommend it if you no want the cool effects it brings. Reflections impact more than just water. Look at the wall as I move closer to it, how it gets darker around my character, or even here where the red from the vending machine is going onto my pickaxe. Like global illumination, if you decide to not use lumen, set it to screen space. However, if you do and want the effects that comes with it, set it to lumen high. For view distance, I find this just affects the range of which you can see loop from. If you want to be able to see loop from very far away, you can set it to medium or even far. However, for me, I often use the ping button to see the loop from a far distance. So I'll be setting it to near as I don't need to render as many objects this way. For textures, I recommend going medium or high. All this setting does is change the resolution of flat objects. For me, however, I got PC resources to spare, so I'm going to go with Epic. For high resolution textures, auto download and reminders, turn those off. We don't have high resolution turned on anyways from my last video, so turn these off. In the last video, I did mention that this setting does cause long loading times. However, I do still occasionally still get this. And I think this is due to DirectX 12 taking a while to load the game. However, I do find that turning high res textures off does lower that time, so turn it off. I also notice no difference between high res textures and normal textures. For effects, I recommend going medium or if you want the fancy new graph gen graphics, go high or even epic. For me, I got epic as I got the extra PC resources and I want the cool death animation you get. Play around with the setting to see what effects you want and are happy to give up. For post processing, set it to low. This setting improves motion blur, depth of field and bloom, most of which you don't want in this game. For hardware ray tracing, I have to apologize for my mistake in the last video. I said that this setting would increase your FPS, however this is incorrect, the opposite actually. This setting will increase the amount of rays used to make you even more accurate ray tracing than Lumen. This is basically Lumen plus Ultra. Generally I would recommend turning this setting off to save you around 20 FPS, but if, if you really want the best of the best lighting and already use Lumen Epic, you can try this setting out. For the final settings, show FPS on if you want to see your FPS, off if you don't. This will not impact your FPS. Use GPU crash debugging off. Has a small performance hit with no benefit to yourself. Latency markers off. Only use it if you want to test your latency on an NVIDIA graphics card. NVIDIA reflex to on plus boost. With the cool lighting and texture graphics come with input lag, so you want to lower your input lag as much as possible with the setting. And finally, a small bonus setting. If you're like me and barely use replays, go to your game tab and turn all your replays off. This will impact your game as your game is recording a replay in the background, so if you don't need to use it, turn it off. And now for the settings you can turn down if you want more FPS. I will go in order for what I would start turning down before I would start changing to performance mode. Hardware ray tracing, TSR low and on performance, view distance, textures, effects, reflections, global illuminations and shadows, nanite, then performance mode. And that is all the settings. Again, if you want a more in-depth look at all the new UE5 graphics in Fortnite, check out Digital Factory's video on the UE5 gra um, graphics. Be sure to like and subscribe so you don't miss any of our future videos, and I'll see you guys all later. Yeah.